good morning everyone i i had been given the topic classification and regression so before we um, go into what is classification and regression i thought that i would ask you a few questions um uh, if you have any questions also you can post it, post it in the chat box so that it will be easier for me to um uh, look at it and give you answers based on it right uh, can you please uh, post a chat message here saying uh, which of these things is not like the others many of you have uh, given me answers to it i'm so happy okay so you have a frog and uh, somewhere in your smaller classes you had studied the shape of a frog you had studied the way in which a frog looks and uh, um why is the frog not like the others any answers very good i see many of you have given me answers on it <clears throat> why is the frog not like the other the shape is not the same the features are not the same good okay different species okay good answers good okay swati should be from computer science background area is different the color is different okay good you know depending on what you had learned earlier you are trying to uh, categorize them you are trying to place them into different categories so that uh whatever you have learned earlier you try to apply and for the question that is asked you try to give an answer to it okay what did you use in order to give me this answer what did you use in order to give me this answer which part of your body did you use in order to give me this answer that it was a frog and you had to do it i okay you use the i to see it okay what other part of the body did you use in order to check good very good akshay yes it's brain and the eyes okay you use the brain in order to analyze you use the brain in order to evaluate okay and uh, we say that the brain is able to make decisions now, now i'll give you one more question i'm so happy that all of you are giving me uh, beautiful answers which of these things is like the others and how you know what is the criteria that is common in all these four pictures they are not the same earlier uh, you found that both the picture uh, pictures were uh, you know three were same but one was different that was easier now this is a bit complex all the four are different but there's some commonality in them good anantaraman thank you it's long towers okay something that is towering okay so it's a leaning tower of pisa it's a church bell tower it's a lighthouse it's a school tower okay so towers right and something that is towering up that is bigger and how do you find it you look at each of the picture and you try to identify what that picture is okay and then you are trying to find out some commonality between them okay now if i ask you to suggest one more picture or an a place which is common which will have a tower can you give me an answer this is a school a church a lighthouse and the leaning tower of pisa any other place wherein you will have a steeple or a, a tower or something protruding on top of it any other uh, picture oh good big ben okay thank you anantaraman any other uh, place that you remember that has this towering structure before it oh burj khalifa yes yes good thank you sivanandu okay paris i have not been to paris so i don't know okay burj khalifa big ben is that only that 
anything in india eiffel tower okay kutub minar okay okay you know something that stands out okay now how are you able to do it you know when i showed you the first question all of you gave me instant answers okay when i showed you the second question i got fewer number of answers to it why because you had to think and you had to um, compare it and you had to find some commonality then think something new and then try to give me the answer when i asked you to suggest another place very few of you suggested the place okay that is because you are still thinking it's not that you have not thought but you are still thinking and you are trying to place relevant pictures that you have already known now how is our brain able to do it okay this is what we will be uh, going through and in data science that you had been listening to all along this week we are trying to use data in order to um, make a machine work like the human brain okay so what happens in this case yes when you look at a, a display or a picture on your computer you will just see uh, you know a beautiful picture but for the machine that is working behind it it will uh, look at it as a big set of numbers the numbers of ones and zeros all together okay and it's very difficult for a machine to understand what the human eye understands because the human eye itself is a complex structure that has a lot of uh, cones and rods in it and these uh, you know try to uh, gather in information and the information that we get with the human eye is actually three dimensional whereas on your computer screen it is mostly two dimensional we are working with augmented reality and other type of reality in order to bring in the third dimension inside but uh, we have not achieved it 100% okay this is because of the complexity that is involved in it you know it becomes very very complex right and one more question what is a two in the set of answers have i picked up everything that is two or do you have any any other picture that you can say it is a two because this is a scribbling of all uh, integer values numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right now uh, when the computer reads it uh, will it be able to find out if it is a two say with our human eye we are trying to place all the twos together and then you know some of the seven looks like two some of the uh, uh, twos look like threes okay one two is missing in the top right corner great okay and all the others maybe a seven the last value in the first row thank you thank you so you have some you know that had been already placed some which you don't understand which you uh, you know it, um, accidentally just oversaw it and you were not able to uh, find it right when our human eye looks at it we are able to easily find out and we are able to place them if it is a two then we say it's a two for the seven you know the fourth row the second uh, third and the fourth item we know that it looks like a two but the place where it is placed is after a six and it precedes a 7 so it should most probably be 7 this is the calculated decision that we make okay now what have we done in this set it is a set of numbers we have classified them as whether it looks like a 2 or whether it is not a 2 or not okay a simple classification just like earlier in the first uh, um, slide we classified lions and uh, frogs the next slide we classified all the towers that have a higher um, you know something sticking out of the building and here we are classifying it as twos okay so when you have to classify for classification you will have to know what you are going to classify how you will be classified okay and how you will be classifying 
and what are the features based on which you are trying to classify the shape the color whatever answers you had given earlier we are trying to use them in order to make the change so if you look at it i just start with a brief definition of machine learning and uh, then move on to an example and give you two examples of what is uh, supervised learning and what are the algorithms that are used one algorithm in uh, classification and one algorithm in regression okay so if you have any questions you can type your questions on the chat box so that as and when i finish something i will be able to address your questions based on what i talk and what am I, whatever i'm giving you is very basic so if you have any questions on that i request you to please put it in the chat box so what is machine learning important thing about uh, data is uh, data science is that there is learning and intelligence present in it and how are we making this learning and intelligence possible it is because of the data that we have okay and this data we'll uh, talk about it in a little while learning is any process by which a system improves performance from experience this word experience is very very important you know um, uh, we have Our uh, professors, we have uh, teachers in our class, schools, and we say they are very experienced teachers. When do you call them experienced? They are able to make calculated decisions. We call those people to be experienced. So, how do you define this experience? This is a relative term. It is not a term that is uh, um, concrete. that can be said it is a one or a zero or it can be given a particular value to it and when you look at experience it comes with a period a set of years say he has 10 years of experience 15 years of experience 30 years of experience so as their number of years increase the amount of experience that they have increases and with it grows knowledge you know our indian society is uh, popularly known for uh, giving importance to elders in the family because they are the epitome of this experience and from their experience we gain a lot of knowledge so this learning is any process by which a system will improve its performance based on the experience the experience can be internal to the system or the experience can come from outside also so if you look at the definition by tom mitchell in 1998 it says machine learning is a study of algorithms that improve their performance at some task with experience e now whatever a human brain can do we are trying to make a machine do it and we are making this possible see all this is possible because of data now that data is something that can help the machine improve its performance on some task that it is trying to do with some experience e three things i want you to remember is the performance the task and the experience the performance is relative and we evaluate the performance of it saying it is so good or it is not so good and the task that we are giving to it will be some work that the machine will undertake by itself and the experience that the machine gains is the machine model which adds to the experience okay so a well defined task is given by p t and e p is the performance t is the task and e is the experience to improve on task t with respect to the performance metric p based on experience e now t p and e can be given some examples for a machine that can play checkers game okay p will be the percentage of games won against a human or an arbitrary opponent and e will be playing practice games against itself so that you gain more experience about the moves and which moves give better result which moves do not give better result so e will uh, keep increasing changing depending upon the amount of uh, you know task that is being repeated again and again okay take an example of recognizing hand written words i've already shown you those uh, alpha those numbers 
So here, the percentage of words correctly classified will be the performance of the system and experience would be a database of human labeled images of handwritten words, or you can even take it as handwritten digits. So what happens here is there is a database, a data store, and it is said to be labeled. These two words I want you to remember. What is this database? You know, this database started off with all the processing, all the machine learnings, intelligence, and other processes that we are into now. What does it do? It tries to store a lot of information. And thanks to the reduction in the uh, technology that stores information, we are able to store a lot, lot of information inside our computers. You know, imagine your uh, mobile phone. Now you have 10 GB, 50 GB mobile phone storage also available, depending on what type of uh, uh, work you do on your mobiles. And uh, you know, in future, it will uh, combine along with your uh, laptops so that you will be able to have many devices that can be used for uh, Maxi services, okay? So in such cases, the database is being stored. You are storing in all the information. Whatever I'm talking now is being stored inside the um, system. Right, And all of you are being sent a copy of it. And I'm sure Cisco will have a copy of it also stored with them. Right, So all this data is being stored inside. And this data had not been used for a long time. So people thought that this database can be used in order to increase the experience of a system. And um, just giving the database will not give us any results. So there may be some human labeled uh, uh, already classified or already divided, uh, identified images or uh, words or whatever is the uh, type of uh, data that we are storing. So those labels are said to be what humans normally label. And we call it as user uh, labeling, where the user will give a particular name to the given item and the item is being stored inside. So there may be a format in which it is being stored inside and these labels are being used in order to train. Okay, we call the word as train. If you remember your LKG uh, kindergarten classes, you would have gone there to just write A and B and C all through your kindergarten. Okay, and when you wrote it, your teachers would give you a test for just writing that small A and getting the shape of your A right is very, very important for you. Okay, but now it's not the case because you already have your mind has been trained with A, B, C's. Now, when I start my lecture, I don't start with how you write A and this is the shape of A, but I directly start it as classification and regression and you're able to read it. Your mind had already been trained with the data and your mind has a model of it and it is able to experience. From the experience that is already there, your mind is able to perform and you are able to read all the text. You know, I have improved on task. Instead of reading it letter by letter, you are reading it very fast. That is because there has already been training inside your brain. Okay, so what I want you to remember is that there is a data. This data is very, very important. That is why we call it data science. And the data can be labeled and the data has to be correctly classified or it, uh, the output has to be predicted. The first slide I gave you for the frog and the lion was to classify. The second slide that I gave you with the towers was to find out or predict a new item, okay? So these are some of the examples that you use in order to improve the uh, task. Now, in traditional programming, what we normally did was we gave data and we wrote the program for it and we gave it to the computer, okay? Say I have to add two numbers. My data is number one, number two. So I give the number one and number two the, to the computer. I write a C program or a Python program to add the two numbers and I give it to the computer. The computer will add the two numbers and give an output, okay? But in today's world, 
we don't work with those simple number systems just to learn programming we go into it what does this type of uh, uh, you know data science or your uh, intelligence or learning do it takes a lot of data and it says this is the output that it wants gives it to the computer and what does the computer do sifts through all the data gain some experience from it and then says this is the program that is used in order to get the output okay and when you look at this program we call it as a model a machine learning model or uh, some method that you use in order to make it possible now what are these methods that are being used these programs are your classification algorithms your regression algorithms your uh, 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 so unsupervised learning uh, method algorithms a lot of algorithms are there new models have also come up we have some deep learning models also available so all these help in trying to convert your data and what type of classification you have to use do say you have a set of animal pictures you will have to find out a cat from the animal pictures you will take the set of animal pictures give it to the computer and you will give the cat picture to the computer the computer will make a model that will say these are the features that will define a cat and these are the features that will define other animals in there okay so what is basically the overall picture of your uh, machine learning is you have uh, a training set or you have some data and this data you extract some features give it to a, a learning algorithm and the learning algorithm will either group the object or it will predict a model or give a program or it will give you some annotated data annotated data is labeled data okay so when a new data comes in this new data will be uh, predicted compared with the model and then you will uh, be able to say which group the new data belongs to okay so this training set is your data set and the larger your training set is the more you are able to get a idea about who uh, what the uh, model will be okay see remember your teachers making you write a for 100 times then you will say oh why are we writing a for 100 times right it is important because when you keep writing it again and again you are uh, taking it inside the shape goes inside and you are training your brain in order to do it the same thing we are trying to do here take 100 examples give it to the model the model is able to understand what it is or gain some experience based on it and then it will be able to perform so how do you find the performance when you give a new data you will be able to find it okay so some of the ml applications are in uh, uh, you know uh, every area we have a lot of applications for this classification and regression uh, one is to predict whether a patient is hospitalized due to a heart attack will have a second heart attack you know uh, now we have this uh, um, blood test that you can do you give your blood and they will do an analysis of it and say in the next 10 years what type of diseases may come to you okay may occur in you uh, there is a lab in madurai one of my friends uh, friend uh, has it it seems and i was like uh, oh it, this is uh, not existent but he said madam it is real and people are using it and uh, in order to uh, find out because they will do some genetic analysis on your blood and they will try to find out if you are uh, if you are prone to some of those diseases so that you can take precautionary measures okay so uh, health care finance management education name an industry it will use this kind of learning or experience or uh, models in them okay predict the price of a stock in a six months in six months from now on the basis of company performance measures and economic data this data is very very important unless you have a lot of data you will not be able to make the predictions properly 
okay whatever you gained an experience over a long period of time you are trying to use it here okay identify the numbers in a handwritten zip code from a digitized image estimate the amount of glucose in the blood of a diabetic person from the infrared absorption spectrum of that person's blood identify the risk factors of prostate cancer based on clinical demographic variables some examples that had been randomly put in together and if it is now how many of you you know uh, you will be able to do an ml application say finding out how many of you are uh, uh, responding and how many of you are in in uh, uh, sync with the lecture that is going on because i don't see your face but i i i'm just looking at a wall of uh, names right <coughs> But there is a mechanism where we will be able to use in order to look at each of you to see if you are interactive. Okay, I can use the chat box in order to make you respond back to me or maybe give you a poll so that you will be able to answer it. Okay, so um, ML applications are useful in many cases, right? So um, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of uh, what are the different types of learning that happen supervised learning is when someone monitors and you already know or you have a labeled data set we are going to uh, study about uh, look in detail about supervised learning which will have classification and regression in them so classification would be like you did in the first slide where you classified a lion from a frog and uh, regression would be to fit in and say what is common across a set of points that are available here. So uh, you try to find out the commonality of the picture and then try to fit in a new picture into the uh, tower slides that I showed you. Okay. So in regression, you will have a value and you will try to um, represent them as an equation. Simple. Okay. Unsupervised learning where you don't know what is in store and you're trying to do clustering or trying to find association between items. Reinforcement learning is uh, about uh, after you have learned, you try to make your decisions and again learn from what you had already learned. Okay, you have Q learning, R learning, so various examples to it. So in supervised learning, we normally ask simple questions like this. Is this image a cat, dog, car, or a house? And uh, when do you say it's a cat? When do you say it's a dog, or a car, or a house? How would this user score that restaurant? And what is the rating that the user would give? Simple is this email a spam. We are not worried about it because we depend on the spam filters that Gmail normally has. Okay. Is this blob a supernova, uh, a small light that suddenly appears in the heavens? Whereas for unsupervised, you don't have a question. You don't have a model behind it. You'll have to just find out if there are similarities between them. You try to cluster some handwritten digit data into different classes or um, what are the top 20 topics in Twitter right now, which are trending and uh, uh, what are the headings behind it or what is the uh, key word that is associated with it. Find and cluster distinct ascents of people at a particular place. Okay, and uh, these are said to be uh, with no precedence. We are given the data and we are supposed to work on it. We will not go into unsupervised learning today. This picture gives you some of the algorithms that we are uh, we can use in order to make classification, regression, clustering, and decision making possible. So, uh, classification you have navy base classifier, decision trees, support vector machines, random forest and k nearest neighbors for regression we have linear regression neural network regression support vector regression decision tree regression lasso regression and rich regression for clustering we have various types of clustering you would have heard about k means clustering 
wherein uh, you will put all the similar group items together that are not having much distance from each other. For decision making, it is Q learning, R learning, and uh, TD learning. Okay. So we will specifically go into the supervised learning where we are given some input samples and some output samples of a function y is equal to f of x. So we would like to learn f, okay? And we would, if given a new data x, it should be xi, you, it should be able to easily find out what the output would be. So in order to do that, first we'll have to define the function f. So that is what we are trying to do here. We would like to learn f and then evaluate it on some new data that comes in. We have different terminologies to it. Training set, training, validation, testing. Okay, A new data would be testing. Uh, input samples and output samples will be training that you give to the system or this function in order to make it identify what is the input and what should be the particular output to it, okay? Unsupervised, given only samples x of the data, we compute the function f such that y is equal to f of x, and this f is defined based on only a group of samples that we have clustered together, okay? So we'll go into supervised learning. What is supervised learning? The algorithms are presented with a set of classified instances from which they learn a way of classifying unseen instances. We call them unseen instance or we call them samples or we call them data. Whatever it is, we put them in, in a database and it is called as the training data. Now on the training data, some algorithm has to run and this algorithm will be a set of steps. So when you run the set of steps again and again on the training data, you generate a model. Now this model is used in order to predict. So for this model, it is being trained and you have a particular way in which this model works. Now when you give a new data, it will automatically compare with whatever is the algorithm and you know features that are stored in it that have been trained in the model and finally it will be able to predict. So what you do is you give your training data and you say this will be the output of it and the model is being generated or the program is being generated here and the program is able to do the work that you normally do with the human mind okay so this is said to be supervised learning where we know what is the data and the data is also labeled and we are able to train an algorithm to make a model and the model will be able to be uh, do prediction in it okay when the attribute to be predicted is numeric rather than nominal it is called as regression so classification and regression become an integral part of what we call as supervised learning, where we are supervising it and the uh, I, data that has been given for training is also classified or labeled. We know 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we know the shape of it. Now we are given a set of data digits in order to identify them, okay? This is an example. Can you tell me what exactly this model is going to do? What is the data and what is the model in this picture? Based on what I had explained to you earlier. Can you give me a chat message? What is the data here? Thank you, Anantaraman. Okay. Dogs and cats. The data is dogs and cats. Good. What is the model? Checking for a dog. Okay. I want all of you to give me answers because I don't want just one answer and then all of you stop. Because you may have different thoughts about this. 
I just want to hear from every one of you. You know, there are uh, more than, how many of you are here? 77. I've just got only four. Okay, the model is the computerized algorithm. Okay. Now, what will the model do? The model will be able to identify. Thank you. Thank you, Avani. Yes, the model will be able to identify that it is a dog, identify the shape and the color. Okay. Identify a dog and the cat. Classify dog or a cat. Okay. Good. But the model has not been defined here. Okay. You have, how many data do you have here? How many instances of the data do you have here? for training the model based on the picture that I've given you. Thank you. It's three. Okay. You have two dogs and one cat. Okay. And uh, we call this training data. Okay. So we are trying to do a binary classification. Thank you, Dharani. So we are trying to do a binary classification and we are training the model and giving it some idea about how a dog will look and then how a cat will look. Okay, now uh, looking at the picture, what is the difference between a dog and the cat that you can see as a human being? How do you differentiate between a dog and a cat? How do you classify them? What features do you find different? Ears? Oh, you have not seen straight uh, eared dogs? In this the ears are different, okay. Okay, there are whiskers. The dog's face is elongated. Shape of the face. You know, when you look at a, a dog, you say immediately it's a dog. When you look at a cat, you say it is immediately a cat, okay. How did you learn it? How did you learn that this looks like a dog and this looks like a cat. Ah, how did you get that experience? Trained by parents. Very good, Anantaraman. Yes, you were trained by parents. They showed you a dog and said, this is a dog. They showed you a cat and said, this is a cat. And the next time you saw a cat and you said, it's a dog. They said, no, no, it is a meow meow. It's not a wow wow. Okay. So, we were trained by our parents and, uh, oh, you had a textbook in primary class, okay. And the textbook had pictures, lots of pictures, if you remember. And those pictures kept coming inside. Now, I don't do a feature comparison. I don't, uh, you don't do an analysis. As soon as I look at it, I'm able to say that it is a dog or a cat. Thankfully, the technology now is so fast that we are able to have a lot of uh, processing capacity with us and we are able to easily classify whether it is a dog or a cat. This learning, this training is very, very important. Now, what happens here is that the dog picture is taken. It is given to the system. A set of features are being added to it. And the second the dog picture is taken and it is given. And we are previously labeling them and say that this is a dog. That is why we say it is supervised learning. And a cat picture is also given to the system. Now the system knows how to identify a dog and how to identify a class and what is a cat and what is the difference between them. So when a new dog picture is given that is not similar to these two dogs, this new dog picture you are able to identify. The system is able to uh, <coughs> classify this dog as a dog. And if it is a regression, then it will give a continuous output and predict what the uh, correct value for an input will be. So there are two phases. One is said to be training and the other is said to be testing. So you train the model with the data that you have and then you try to test with them. So if you take data, Say data can be a set of examples here. Can you tell me what are these pictures and how do you classify them? Good. 
general category of them is fruits okay shape and color okay apples and bananas very good okay weight based on the picture you cannot tell that there any because uh, they may look big but they may weigh very less unless you weigh it you will not be able to do it any other characteristic from the data say when i showed you the set of uh, yes you have uh, three colors here colors shape is different and uh, you know you immediately give them as fruits and then you say they are apples and bananas do the two apple look the same no you have a red apple you have a green apple you have a yellow banana and you have a green banana okay soft and hard um, jamuna you cannot touch it unless you touch it you will not be able to say i am just asking you to look at the picture and give me the answer so uh, the uh, soft and hard the texture that is what we call for soft and hard and then the weight of it okay so that we will have to um, have more information in order to um, evaluate that okay with the picture that i am showing you can only look at the shape the color and then the size of it okay whether it is small or big leaf oh one apple has a leaf in it okay right so this is said to be data now we have this data available with us and we have all, already learned about this data okay now what we are trying to do in supervised learning is that we are trying to give labels for this data that we have can you type me four labels that you want to label them in can you type with comma separation type four labels for each of these uh, four pictures give me label 1 what will be the value for label 1 label 3 label 4 and label 5 okay first is red apple okay red apple green apple yellow banana green banana very good all of you have done the same thing good anyone else with a different type of labeling red apple green apple yellow banana green banana okay very good any other uh, type of uh, labeling a b c d okay raw banana oh you kai palo okay okay you say it is unripe and ripe banana okay a b c d is very general okay so since we know that they are fruits in fruits they can be classified as apples and bananas so if we say label 1 and label 3 can be apples and label 4 and label 5 can be bananas and if you want a, a further uh, a classification of it you can say it is red apple green uh, apple yellow banana and green banana okay you can say large apple small apple the bananas look the same size okay so who is giving the labels we are giving the labels someone who knows about the model gives the labels for the given model now we are giving labeled examples to the system this labeled example is being given to the model or the predictor now the model or the predictor will be able to take the labeled examples identify what they are and then try to give a predicted label to a new item that i give so what is this new uh, data that is being fed inside can you look at this data and tell me what type of uh, um, you know data it is good thank you it is an yellow apple okay and did we have the yellow apple in the previous data set no 
okay then how did we combine the previous data set to say that this is an yellow apple we had an yellow banana and we had a red apple they don't go together okay but we are trying to make the prediction based on all the two attributes it should be red or it should be green if the shape is this then you call it an apple if the shape is long then you call it a banana okay but the colors don't matter here you have a green apple you have a green banana so the colors don't matter here okay good apple was there the texture was there but no the color and the shape okay uh, 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 kaja mohideen now we are adding this yellow apple to it is there any change in the data set you had red apple green apple yellow banana green banana now yellow apple also comes into picture is there any change in the model now will there be any change the data is changed but the model remains the same but the model has added new features saying that there is an yellow color apple also okay so the model keeps learning the model keeps adding experience to it so that you are able to make the prediction later okay so we are learning to predict new examples that doesn't fit with the original data that has been labeled also and all the labels see we normally give it as uh, for classification we are classifying them only as two classes sorry one is an apple and the other is a banana we are not classifying based on the shape the color but we are giving a finite set of labels that will be able to group them together or divide them into two different types of uh, fruits basically okay we we you know red apple has its own advantage green apple has its own advantage we are not going into the intricacies of it we are just making a classification as two types of fruits that we are so for uh, labeling them as two types of fruits what type of uh, characteristics are we supposed to take what are the features that you will have to take in order to label them as apples and bananas only color color becomes confusing because banana and apple both are yellow good good shape okay very good so only the shape determines here the color is another attribute but the feature is not very important okay and in such case we are trying to look only at the shape and we are trying to classify into a final set of labels in them this is another example where you have a categorical variable here also it is categorical apple is one category banana is another category okay uh, here it is uh, you are given x1 and y1 x1 would be the tumor size and y1 would be whether it is benign or malignant okay so you are trying to learn a function f of x to predict the value of y if given x okay so y is categorical so we are trying to plot the points and if the plot points run run in the uh, lower section we call it benign if it uh, comes in the ones place then we call it malignant so any other point here that happens you will automatically say that it is malignant say i have a point here okay so what happens to this point this point will be malignant depending on the um, other points so it since it lies in the same plane we automatically classify them and make it belong to a particular shape say in this case if i have another apple like this then we say that it is an apple okay if we have a banana like this then we say that it is a banana 
okay so we are trying to find out what the shape is and then we are trying to define them so this type of applications are present in a lot of areas why i am giving you the application is when you look at the application it becomes more interesting for you okay uh, face recognition trying to identify who a particular person is you know um i normally uh, i started my research with this um you just walk on the road and then you see someone walking before you uh, you know those era when before uh, face mask we used to talk with people or look at people's face you know when he is at a distance his face will look familiar to you okay and then slowly he comes closer you will immediately start thinking i saw this person somewhere where did i see and then immediately you will see uh, you will get the park where you saw him okay and then you will uh, get the people who were around you and then finally you will find out what is faces you know what is name is and then you will say hello and uh, get the person but before you say hello and give the person's name you had done a lot of thinking trying to find out where exactly you met him what is his name what is the characteristic the behind and all this is possible because of the information or the data that is stored inside your brain that is what we are trying to analyze now okay and the first step is to identify the face so how do you recognize a face we have certain data points and you know eyes are placed uh, parallel to each other the nose the mouth and for every person the orientation of it the length and the height of it keeps changing so we are trying to use some of these features in order to make it possible okay and then we have character recognition the shape of a character say i have the habit of writing two like this you know and someone else has the habit of writing two like this or they will write two like this so how do you identify what the shape of it is and how do you make them all represent the same and in your uh, computer you will write a two like this okay so there are different shapes and all of them represent the same but how can we find the commonality between them detection of spam messages okay so how can you find out whether a message is a good message or a spam message a call is a fake call or a real call and uh, how can you find out whether there is something malicious and added on to the uh, communication that you are sending okay from medical diagnosis right from symptoms to illness you know you can google in and find out whatever is your problem and there are a lot of bots that can give you answers also right the only thing is like we uh, cannot fully depend on them but they are very good information providers okay then we have this biometrics where you recognize uh, or authenticate using physical behavioral characteristics financials where you can uh, classify people people as high risk or low risk education where you can uh, classify students as uh, you know uh, risky category or people who will either pay fees or not pay fees depending on various attributes to them what are these attributes they are data data that has been given to the given system okay Uh, if you have any questions i want you to give me the questions so that i'll be able to take a few questions as i go through okay so in supervised learning i want you to remember about data okay i want you to remember what data is they are said to be labeled instances and who is labeling can you tell me who will give labels for this data humans okay we right it is humans right we human beings give labels for this data and at times we can use the machine also thank you avani chandra you can use machines also in order to give this data 
okay good it is someone who has knowledge or the experience and now we have a lot of models available those models can easily help us label this data example will be emails mark spam or not spam now what we normally do is we have a data set okay there is a data set this data set is being uh, divided into different sets one we call it as training set another we call it as validation set and another we call it as test set so what we normally do is take the whole data and we don't give the entire data to the model in order to make it work we give maybe 80 or 75 percentage of the data to the model the model will take it make it uh, uh, you know train the whole system and then we will validate the model to see if it is right then we will give a new data that it has not seen which we call as test set and uh, see if it will be able to do the prediction or the labeling properly okay what are the features the features are said to be the attribute value pairs which characterize each of the instances what were the features for this apples and bananas it was the shape and the color okay the color was secondary but the shape was the main factor okay the height of it the width of it and uh, what is the way distance between the uh, boundaries of them so different features we will try to take in order to identify that which we take for granted with our eyes we are trying to use the feature set in order to do it okay the experimentation cycle will be you will learn the parameters on the training set tune the hyper parameters on the validation set and compute the accuracy of the test set so there are some important uh, uh, words here one is called the parameter the hyper parameter and the accuracy we already saw what is training set and what is validation set okay so what are the um, parameters shape the color the pixel values of a given image or for a video some of the um, we call it shift uh, um, feature vectors a set of feature vectors that define each of the frame for uh, words it will be the set of words you know back of words model where you have a set of words that will define and vectors which are used in them they are said to be the parameters and tune the hyper parameters on the validation set once the training set trains completely then there may be some problem with the model understanding it so what do we normally do say if tomorrow your teacher says you are going to give an example or problem on uh, identifying objects then we will give many objects to our children to see if they are able to identify them okay and what will we do if they are wrongly identifying a cat as a dog then we will try to find out what made them do the uh, uh, wrong identification that is called as hyper parameter tuning okay sometimes your dog may look like a cat so you will have to tell them certain other features like the whiskers here some smaller minute uh, features that had been proper not properly done so this we call it as hyper parameter tuning i explain it to you when we uh, see an example of it then you compute the accuracy of the test set give us a set of unknown variables and see what is the accuracy with which the model is able to predict it properly so the accuracy will be fraction of instances or fraction of the labeled instances which were predicted correctly some of it may be predicted wrongly also and we call them to be true positive true negative false positive false negative in that okay and uh, two problems that can occur is called overfitting and generalization okay so what is overfitting you want a classifier which does well on the test data and overfitting will be to fit the day training data very closely so that every item is being considered 
you know when you have a general idea like you want to fit a yellow apple into the system you find it very difficult okay if you say yellow green and red are apples then it is overfitting because there are yellow bananas also okay so what we'll have to do is remove the um, color and stick on only with the shape and that is where we will try to train the data properly in order to determine the output based on what is the result that is required or what is the classifier output that is required if your classifier output is to uh, divide them based on colors you divide them into three categories red green and yellow if your classifier output is based on fruits you divide them as apples and bananas if your classifier output is based on the texture then you divide based on the texture of the fruit soft and hard okay so depending on the output the data will be the same depending on the output your model will change i'll give you an example of it so the input will be an email for your spam filter the output will be whether the email is spam or ham the setup for the model will be get a large collection of example emails each label spam or ham note someone has to hand the label of all this data someone has to hand label it you want to learn to predict labels of new and future emails this is your problem okay what are the features the attributes used to make the ham or the spam decision so you can use words like free dollars and many words that automatically do you can use a little uh, natural language processing also in order to do it okay and if it has a lot of uh, other data associated with it like uh, un uh, incoherent data then you also say that it is a spam you just look at this messages the first one is it's properly worded so it is not a spam second one it is some information that is being given third one you know that it is already a spam okay so you are able to determine it based on the content of the text that is given in it <clears throat> this is an example of uh, digit recognition so you have images of 0 1 2 1 and what will be the final uh, value for this can you give me what is the answer for the final image that uh, has been given the values are 0 1 2 and 1 okay some of you say it is 0 and some of you say it is 2 okay so depending on the type of data that we have it changes okay yeah, we have a large collection of Im example images if there are supposed to be other numbers before it then we try to place them but this can either be a 0 or it can be a 2 okay and the attributes used to make the decision digit decision is based on the pixel values we calculate we take the complete image we take it pixel by pixel okay and we are trying to find out some relationship between them and we try to find out how much of this will belong to two and how much percentage of it will uh, it belong to zero and try to find out what is the probability of this letter being a zero and the probability of this being a two can you give me some probability for it to be zero and the probability for it to be two how close is it to zero and how close is it to two in a 100 point scale what will be the percentage 50 50 okay any other answers oh it is 0 1 2 again it is 1 and then so it should be 2 okay 
Okay, that's a different way of thinking it. Good. <coughs> Any other answers? Seventy thirty. Okay, Ashwin. Okay. Oh, eighty percent. It is two. Okay. Now tell me, how do you make that decision that it is eighty percent two? Based on some previous next value, based on uh, so the look and feel of it, based on how the stock has started and where it has ended, okay. And if you have some more information of who wrote it or how it was written, then we will have even more information about it. Good. Avani says it is data. You know, this is what we call as data science, wherein you use this data in order to make uh, proper decisions. Some of the examples are facial recognition. You know, you are able to recognize faces automatically and uh, the face is also named in your Facebook when you send in your images, your face is immediately named, right? And all that is possible because we are able to train the model and the model is able to understand when it looks at your face again. So there are data points here. And these data points and their orientation with other data points is made into a facial network. And all these points are data that is being stored inside. Okay. Speech recognition, you identify words spoken according to speech signals. So you have automatic voice recognition systems that can recognize based on the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, pitch change in the pitches and change in the frequency of the uh, vectors so that you will be able to find some pattern based on it and try to identify what type of speech it is and convert maybe speech to text we have google apis available for that now and we have alexa and siri that help us to uh, talk with them and try to communicate with them okay so if you look at classification classification will be to just divide into two okay is this ma'am or not and will i be able to do it whereas regression covers situations where it is const continuous predicting the value of a house based on various inputs that are given this is one example in regression we will say what is the temperature going to be tomorrow based on yesterday the past week's information what will be it? And we are trying to do a prediction or a, a forecast. Okay. Classification is, will it be hot or cold tomorrow? So depending on the previous values, we will say this much percentage, it can be cold and this much percentage, it can be hot. Okay. So it is said to be um, a differentiation in the place of classification and it is said to be a prediction in the case of regression. Uh, so if you look at it, uh, there are two instances of class one and class two, and now you will have to divide them. So how do you classify them? M most of the class one is on one side and most of the class two is on the other side and we draw a line between them. Okay. So this line can be changed also. Okay. What I can do is I can uh, take all this green connect them together and I can uh, connect all the green ones only and say this is one classification of it and then I can say I can connect all the blue ones together and I can say this is another classification of it but if I draw something like this it becomes too difficult for us to map the area over which it belongs to. This we call it as overfitting, where I'm trying to include all the data inside it, which will never be uh, good for the final model. We call it overfitting, where we try to include every model into it, okay? 
and this is said to be the regression function. We have a set of uh, uh, data points available here. Now, all these data points are trying to be fitted into this single curve, uh, straight line that we have calculated. And uh, we are trying, if a new data point comes here, we will try to find out whether it belongs to this category or the category below the line. And we find out how much it belongs to the given line also. Okay. So in classification, we predict labels Y for inputs X. Examples are a lot of examples which we have already seen. So in OCR, optical character recognition, the input will be the images and the classes will be the characters that we are uh, recognizing, okay? The uh, letters that we are recognizing. For medical diagnostics, the input will be the symptoms and the classes will be the diseases that people have. Automatic essay grading, the input will be a document, scan of the document, and the classes will be the grades of the students that are being assigned to it. For fraud deduction, the input will be the activity in the account, the transaction time, the amount of uh, transaction that happens. And the class will be whether it is a fraudulent or a no fraudulent activity. For customer service email routing, the input will be the email and the classes would be the various routes that it has to go through. Okay. For recommended articles in a newspaper or recommended books, the input will be the customer taste and the output will be the recommended class to which they belong. You know, every company is trying to do this recommendation now, trying to group their customers so that similar customers are all joined together, okay? Then we have DNA, protein sequence identification, astronomical, financial, name any field. They can use this uh, models in order to train because every field has data. The format of the data, the uh, features of the data only vary, but the data remains the same. You can convert it into some set of numbers and the numbers can be used in classification very, very easily. Okay. So what do you do in this case? It is a classification of animals and you have an algorithm here. Your algorithm can be a linear regression algorithm or a KLN algorithm or a clustering algorithm that will generate a model based on the data set and the output that you wanted. Output is to identify lions carefully, okay? And if it is a single output, then you call it a binary classifier where you say whether it is a lion or not a lion, okay? And if it is multi-classifier, then it has to classify lion separately, elephant separately, and tiger separately. And that is also possible, okay? So there are various classification techniques. You have decision tree-based methods, rule-based methods, navy base and Bayesian belief networks, neural networks. They have different ways of trying to classify. Other than that, the basic classification rules remain the same. Okay, so any classification will have a model construction and a model usage. What do you do in model construction? You will describe a set of predetermined classes. Say you take your apples and your bananas. What we did was took the shape, the predetermined class, and we tried to divide them as fruits. Okay, so if it is fruits, then it has one type of classes. If it is shape, uh, sorry, color, then it is another type of classes, okay? So each tuple or sample is assumed to belong <coughs> to a predetermined class as determined by the class label. And the set of tuples used for model construction is called as the training set or the data. And the model is represented as a set of classification rules or decision trees or some mathematical formula like y is equal to mx plus c or some equation to which it has to be fitted in, in order to belong to a class or not belong to a class, okay? The model, after it is constructed, then you use the model for unknown or future objects. We call them as, what type of mod, uh, what do you call these unknown or future objects as? What terminology did I use in my previous slide?
Can you give me what terminology are you awake? What do you call this future or unknown object as? Very good. Thank you, Anantaraman. Test object. Okay. If we are trying to test them, okay, and then we estimate the accuracy of the model, the known label of test sample is compared with the classified result from the model, and the test set is independent of the training set. And uh, if the accuracy is acceptable, we use the model to classify data tuples. No model can be fully classified, uh, fully 100% accurate. It may give you some false positives and it may give you some false negatives also. So uh, this is actually a training set and this is actually a test set. It's the same. The test set will not have this classes. So you will remove the classes and you will give it to the model. So initially you give the training set to the model and the learning algorithm. The model learns completely and it is uh, ready. Now you apply the model and try to find out what is the type of class it belongs to for the test set. Then you compare it with the original data to see if the predicted class is the same as the original class. If it is not, the accuracy goes down. If it is right, the accuracy comes up. Okay, so we will uh, look at one example of the algorithm. I thought I can do only one here. So it is the K nearest neighbors. Okay, so uh, what happens in your uh, case is that you have a set of points called category A and another belonging to category B. Okay, say you take them as these are category A is dogs and category B is cats. Okay. Now there is a new data point here and this new data point has to be classified either as category A or category B. So how can I do the classification, right? Now this new data point after you apply K and N is being assigned to category B. How is it possible? Okay. There is a set of steps through which the algorithm goes through. First, you will have to select the number of uh, number K of the neighbors. So if you look at it, see, this is a neighbor, this is a neighbor, this is a neighbor, and this is also a neighbor to it, okay? How do we find these neighbors? We try to calculate the distance between them, okay? So calculate the Euclidean distance of K number of neighbors and take the k nearest neighbors as per the calculated Euclidean distance. So we are trying to find out the distance between the new data point with all the other nearby points and find out which is less. Okay. And among these k neighbors, count the number of data points in each category. So we assign the new data point to that category for which the number of neighbor is maximum. So this is our model. Okay, now what we are trying to do is we choose the value of k is equal to 5, which we normally do as default. Then calculate the Euclidean distance between the data points from this data to the other uh, close by items together. Okay, so this Euclidean distance between the two data points is uh, sum of squares of uh, square root of the sum of squares of their distances. Okay, so um, there are other uh, Manhattan distance and various other distances that can be calculated between the items also. So if you calculate the Euclidean distance, we got the nearest neighbors as three for this category A and two for the category B. So can you tell me which category it will belong to? A or B? I got a B, I got an A, which is right. We'll go back to the um, steps. Take the K nearest neighbors as per the cal calculated Euclidean distance. Among these K neighbors, count the number of data points in each category and assign the new data point to the category for which number of neighbor is maximum. Okay. So the number of neighbors for A is how many? Three. The number of neighbors for B is two. 
So which is maximum here, A or B? The maximum here is A, right? So if you take that, then it belongs to the new data point belongs to the category A. So depending on this, we are trying to find out what is the distance between them in order to understand. Can you tell me whether uh, this new data point will belong to class A or class B? Class A is the red points, class B is the B po um, blue points, okay? So uh, can you tell me whether this green data unknown point will belong to the red category or the blue category? Uh, you can type either red or blue because it will confuse you. You had used A and B earlier. It belongs to the red category. Good, thank you. Why does it belong to the red category? Uh, how many near neighbors are there for A, uh, red? Three near neighbors are there for red, but there is only one near neighbor for blue, okay? So in such case, we uh, place this data point along with the nearest neighbors in there, okay? Um, you will have to use K nearest neighbors, okay? Find the K closest matches in this data set. Can you tell me how many pictures match the uh, cat image that is given here? This is the cat image. Now find out what are, how many pictures match the cat image below. Give me the number. One, two, okay. Any other answer? Three, okay. I love to find one more cat here. Okay. So you have three images. Very good. Okay. Um, and as I give you more time, you're able to find out how many images are there. And here we have three cat images available. Okay. So K is equal to three words for cat. And the image, you uh, know, the uh, nearest neighbors, it will have one word for a buffalo one vote for a deer and one vote for a lion in it. But th those votes don't count, okay? It may be closer, but we are taking the maximum nearest neighbors to it. So here we have three cat pictures in which the third one can also belong to a tiger. But since it is small, we take it as a cat in this case, okay? So I hope you understand what is the K nearest neighbor. It's a simple logic. Now, what we are doing is we are taking the algorithm, making it run on this data for a long time. It is a leopard, yes, but it's small. So we uh, leopard belongs to the cat family. So we are uh, combining it together as the cat here. Okay. So there, uh, uh, there are some criteria for K before we go into it. I want you to remember this model that we had followed. Okay, so you have this, uh, okay, uh, so you have this model. Now, this is the data that we are using it in order to train. There is a lot of data available here. Now, this data, you are trying to give it to the model so that the model will understand them thoroughly. All the features that are available in it will be understood by the model and it will store it inside. Now, when you give a test data, it will compare it with the features that are available in order to say which feature wins, okay? So there is a criteria for K. Normally we take it as K is equal to five. For very low K value as one or two, the values can be, a lot of neighbors will result and it will result in noisy data or outliers in the model. Some things becoming, uh, anomalies also, okay? And large values of for K is good, but if you take large values, you have a lot of uh, processing to do and there may be overlapping of the K cases, classes also, 
Okay. So the advantages and disadvantages, this is some simple advantage and disadvantage that I put. There are also others available. It is simple to implement robust to noisy training data. It can be more effective if the training data is large and uh, um, you know um, it is complex at times. Computational cost is also high. Okay. So um, we saw classification and an example in it. Regression is similar to it. We know what is the learning, what is the model, and how we are working on them. So if you have a model, and if it is regression, then the model value will be real valued instead of a category. It is not Apple or thing. We have a, a label given to it as a value, and this value is a number. Okay. So if you take this price of a car, so uh, mileage and then the price. Depending on the amount of mileage increase, the price keeps uh, redu reduction in the mileage, the price increases. If there's more mileage, then the price of the car decreases. This is a trend which we automatically know. But given a mileage, how will you be able to calculate it? This is an example of a regression. Okay. So in regression, you will have x1, x2 values. And then you will plot the x1 value and the x2 value, y2 values in a plot and try to find out which line would represent them. There can be multiple lines. It can either be a straight line or it can be a curved line or it can be a logistic line. Okay. So you can draw lines depending on the data that you are working with. Okay. So applications, you have it anywhere, economics, finance, car, navigations, uh, weather, predictions, any type of predictions, you use it, okay? And one more thing I want you to talk, think about is lay ranking. Ranking will also come in trying to rank, which is right. One example will be to uh, find a set of pages and find out which is most relevant to each one of you. That is an example of ranking also but ranking does not come under classification ranking basically is like you cluster it or you classify it and you give them ranks saying what is the amount of belonging it has to a particular class okay a regression is basically a, a statistical procedure that determines the equation for the straight line so this will be the line of regression that we call that will best fit the data points. Some may be dependent for variables and independent variables in them. So this data points and the regression line, we'll have to find out what is the equation for the regression line using the mathematical uh, models and describe the relationship between the data points in them, okay? I'll give you one example. If we were to plot the height and independent or predictor variable, as a function of the body weight, the dependent or outcome variable, we might see a very linear relationship between them, okay? Say you have a straight line and uh, then there is a body weight in y-axis, height in x-axis. So as the height increases, the body weight also increases, okay? So if you are an individual which, who is 70 inches tall, we would predict his weight to be what? The equation is this, y is equal to a plus bx, where a is 80, b is 2. Can you tell me what will be his weight? If you uh, give the value of x to be 70, what will be the weight of the given person? Using the equation, y is equal to a plus bx. Yes, excellent. So you have the weight to be, thank you, Ashwini, <coughs> 80 plus 2 into 70. Okay. So the value is 220 LBS, limbs. That is how we do the prediction. So how do we do it? So we take 80 and then uh, we do a, a line here and automatically it comes into something which is higher than whatever we have calculated okay so uh, this type is because there is a linear increase and all the data points can be on either side of the regression line and the distance between them will give you the error value 
Okay. I think I have one more slide on it. I'm just skipping through because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, we have the scatter plot of data with various correlation coefficients. And you can see that this line, this is said to be uh, correlation uh, minus one. Okay. And this is said to be correlation plus one and uh, correlation zero, uh, where the data points are on either side and they are equal spaced. It can be linear or it can be curvy linear in this case, okay, depending on the type of relationship that they have. And they, there can be strong relationship between the uh, correlation or there can be weak correlation relationship in the regression slide. Okay. And uh, in linear regression, we will uh, have the values. The truth value is this. So the error between them will be calculated and that error is being used in order to uh, find out how much a new value will be able to fit into the given model. Okay, uh, this is an example of logistic regression. This is a decision tree where you will have to uh, classify whether a patient is high risk or not for blood pressure. And this is about support vector machine where a single line will not give you a perfect classification for them. So we are trying to use a certain other measures also in order to classify. Say if you take that example of uh, classifying uh, apples and bananas, okay? If you want to uh, uh, classify them as raw and unripe, then it will be the color. If you want to classify them as uh, fruits, then you will have uh, the shape of it, okay? So if you want to classify them as the uh, color, you will use one regression line and for shape, you will use another regression line, okay? So you will have different vectors defining them. Linear regression, uh, we have uh, seen that there is polynomial regression, support vector regression, decision tree regression, random forest rich regression, lasso regression and logistic regression okay so there are different types of regressions that we uh, work with in statistics but the important point i want you to remember is that whatever be the regression uh, type you are using in python we have packages that will help you in trying to identify them this is an example uh, i'd like to skip the example Okay, and uh, I'm not going to the details of it. So this is an, a classified uh, comparison between the classification and the regression algorithms. Okay, you can just go through it. If you don't understand anything, you can give me a message. Any words or any uh, thing that you don't understand. <laughs> I think I've given you uh, enough information about all the terminologies that are present. Is there anything that you don't understand in this slide? Decision boundary. Boundary is the line, okay? And, uh, um, you know, where do you make the classification, whether it is a dog or a cat? That we call as the decision boundary. With the decision boundary will be the um, demarcating line which will divide the data set into different classes okay so in the case of your uh, uh, apples and bananas the decision boundary is the shape okay it is not the color is there any aggregation fit into both regression and classification attributes of the data set remain the same you can either apply the method of regression or classification depending on whether it is discrete or whether it is continuous. Okay, uh, this is actually uh, towards datascience.com. If you can uh, Google it, you will have this Python in five lines of code, which uh, gives a small example of how this can be done. Okay, you will have to use the SkyKit Learn. This has a lot of packages, it's very easy. You can first take whatever is there, just run it on your uh, collab, uh, Google collab, and then try to uh, build up on it. Or any Python uh, framework where SkyKit Learn is being uh, has been installed. Okay, so you set some limits 
Uh, these are some parameters that you create, set, and then you have random integers being generated. And uh, this is actually your equation here. Okay, you uh, use a training and you have an output. And to train the model, you will use linear regression. All you'll have to do is call a function with an open and a close parenthesis and give the parameters right. Okay, uh, people will be helping you in uh, doing it. And uh, you, you will have to call this predictor.fit with the training input and the output. So it is just two lines of code that you will use in order to train the model. Okay, and your input is here in the train input, your output will be in the train output. They are all variables. Now, uh, this is an equation actually, right? Uh, y is equal to a plus 2b plus uh, uh, 3c. Okay, so you are taking another value called uh, as this. So 10 in plus uh, b is 20 and c is 30 and the output should be 140. Okay, so we give the test value as 10, 20 and 30. What will be the outcome? When you predict it, predicted or predict will automatically predict the value as whatever is the coefficient. So this value is being printed out as saying it is 140, which is the same, right? So a simple model here with just five lines of code. Uh, I'll show you this so it's easier. These are the, uh, you know, uh, models to generate the training set. You are using random numbers to generate A, B, and C and you're calculating the values, you're creating a training set here. Okay, so this will be your data set. Then this is your model that you're creating. And then this is the testing that you're trying to do on the model in order to work. A simple model with an equation y is equal to a plus 2b plus 3c. Okay, you're trying to predict what is output if you give a, b, and c to it. Okay, so you will be able to uh, use the uh, linear regression uh, package that is available in SkyKit Learn in order to do that. This you can Google it, you can uh, find out uh, the uh, method of how it is done. Similarly, there are deep learning models also available, which is very easy. All you will have to do is know what are the parameters that have to be changed. The model is just the black box, so you can just use the model and you will be able to run a session out of it. But you should know a little about TensorFlow and uh, other uh, uh, you know, packages that are being used in order to make it possible. Analytics Vidya is one good, uh, um, you know, Analytics Vidya is one good uh, um, website that will give you good uh, information about these machine learning and deep learning models. Uh, I'm done with what I have wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, you can share it with me. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you very much.